um, so, as we talk about the research, I'm really impressed with the Janet Gyatso's approach uh, to um, the uh, Tibetan studies. Um, she done uh, many years of research on Nam Tars. Um, she did uh, also research on Jingmi Limba's uh, autobiography as well. And recently, I went to Chicago, and uh, another researcher done wonderful research on the Sarah Kanto, the Wisa Kanto. And this research, it seems more like a holistic approach and a more kind of a comprehensive. Um, so that's something I think we really need to uh, learn from Janet and these wonderful scholars. Um, I think it's a good idea that we engage in research on uh, general subjects such as uh, you know, the uh, Uma, the Tibetan uh, or the Uma, the Buddhist kind of uh, uh, study on views, philosophical views, the logics, as, and uh, Vajrayana, the Tantra. We can study them. That's no problem. Uh, and so when I uh, look at how we should approach on researching uh, Tibetan Buddhist teaching or the Buddhist teaching in general, I think uh, um, if you wanted to engage more holistically, um, you really need to study um, this subject. Um, when you engage in a research on a particular subject, you really first really hear the teaching itself. There are many commentaries. You really read the commentaries, study the commentary. And there, within the commentary, there are different level of commentaries. You have the general kind of uh, commentaries, literal commentaries. Then you talk about the experiential commentaries, the murti. And to receive some of this experiential commentary and instruction, you have to receive empowerment. Uh, you have to really agree to um, observe certain commitment. These are a kind of a prerequisite for going into a much deeper level of the study. And it would be really, I think, useful for the researchers to think about you know, studying them much more deeply, studying the commentaries, you know, hearing the instructions, the pithy instructions from the real teacher. And this will bring your research a much better quality. And unless um, if you just do at an artificial level, I think your result also would be a little bit artificial. That's you know, my view. Um, recently, I heard uh, while I'm uh, touring the United States, uh, some researchers uh, questioning about where should we keep Vajrayana as a secret teaching, 
we really need to reveal this and uh, this we need to remove this secret from the coding <coughs> because you know the only way you can study it properly would be by removing this like a uh, secrecy and i had really some doubt and the question over this uh, view this is because uh, uh, engaging in this very kind of uh, authentic teaching, there's certain commitment, both from the researcher point of view as well as from the uh, other people, need to be observed. Because when you read at the end of the commentaries and these pithy instructions in the Vajrayana teaching, the writers request confidential. You know, at the Samaya, you do not show these people who do not receive commitment. These are the requests from the authors, and that's what we have to observe. Um, keeping secrecy is like uh, um, important for even personal reasons. Uh, in the West, we do not share our salaries. You know, we do not you know, easily tell how old we are. Um, there are certain kind of uh, minimum um, privacy that we all strive for. Likewise, the Tibetan Buddhism, especially Vajrayana, need to have this minimum privacy too. And if we do not observe that and expose this to anyone, then it will bring more harm than benefit for a research result. Uh, then it's Tokyo to go Zentela, that is Junju Gitana, the Niji, that Tela, that is Gobak Tongitana, the Ni, that Taran Pingu, the Ni, Dan Jamandra, the Niki number Boko Chuganana in the Eti, Kagna Rani or it, and it's Tokyo to go on Jendanga on the Parola, a Gobak Tongi so yet. Yamlimbag, the Ranga Yamlimbo so itana, that the Stokyo at its solar pit, that is Charlie, pit that is Koran to that drift our sonnery. Even within the Tibetan Buddhist followers, there is a constant, uh, constant contradiction and a disagreement between the Tokewa, the debaters, or people who kind of only engage in debating, uh, versus people who are engaging in serious practices. So there's a kind of a disagreement between the debaters and the practitioners. Uh, the first one only kind of uh, interested in uh, critiquing others. Um, really uh, try to um, critiquing others' interpretation, whereas the practitioners are more interested in the experience, the result, the realization. So this kind of uh, disagreement is also obvious within the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Uh, um, and in my view, um, when we engage uh, in the religious uh, research activities, we really need to understand the background of the religion or the subject itself well, and we also need to understand the system of that particular knowledge uh, through that tradition. And uh, when you understand the system, the background well, then naturally you will pay more respect to the subject. Um, I heard uh, among the Christian uh, or the scholars who are researching on Christianity, and they say the one of the prerequisite of that research is the person at least to show respect to the creator or they accept the creator. And when you do that, then the person would show a genuine respect to the topic and the subject. And then they will engage in the research much more kind of holistically. And I'm asking the same thing uh, for the uh, Tibetan Dharma researchers or scholars. Also, 
Тэгээ ч юм тамба юм зэйд ана да Куран цуг жүнгэр гадна я өнсөн цар уусан уу. Тэгээ юм би гэмсэнг дансан замуул нэг мөн тамчиг та качиг чула дараг жимжиг шинэ нэ кола пудгэн рүүгөө тэгээ цэг даанар 101 Quran or the Islamic uh, the teaching, and I, especially, you know, they do so without showing any respect, then it's the duty of the followers to really defend your teaching. Um, it mentioned clearly in the uh, Quran. Uh, yeah. uh, а жамба а чи нацула та ригам тэнэ маре зэ тэни та чи ягэр гэ чүг жэмжиг цуу гэдэг юм на та ягэр ва кром атуу зэ мэн жамба гэм мэрэг дана жамба гэм мэ цуу та ригэ тэни та гавс та ригэ шеку нэ маре тэнжэг өчөр юм жэ эм дэн амон ди инду стадис ди сколарс эм ди индианс рили пэ лот оф атеншн он дэ сабжект со ди Indian scholars themselves pay a lot of attention to what others read about it, the Indian topics. And uh, when there are some kind of uh, uh, mis-presentation uh, of the information, they immediately defend and attack and critique. Um, I forgot one uh, last sentence from the pre previous discussion. Because of that, you know, in Islamic, in the Quran teaching, the chapter second nine talks about defending and attacking the infidels, people who doesn't follow. Um, it created this kind of uh, atmosphere where less people, less non-Islamic scholars study about Islam. Because in the Quran it says it's the responsibility of the followers to defend the teaching. So that's one ex extreme example. And then I talk about in, among the Indians, the Indian <laughs> scholars to really defend, uh, defend their uh, subject well. Then I saw Popa got a mumbos, so mumbos the Yagarna song. Reta and Matsu Popa got the Chulik de Yagarala, the pants and jet of Kayomare. The Yagaraga Chulik de Matsu Popa Layam, Ninoshi, Remato Zemana, Sikasigatari and Jagayon Mare, the Kurons of Georgian. And so we know many Tibetans now live in India and they have constant almost like a contact with Indian people. But there are very little exchange in terms of uh, studies. Not many Indians study about Tibetan Buddhism. Not many Tibetans you know, really pay attention on the non-Buddhist traditions in India. It seems like the contact is very limited. Nearby your son, Marcus, they own Sare. The name Jagger Chuluag and a Zosha and Miss Zoma Sadnerita. That the Zosha Sana and the Chosayak, Zosha, Zuna Chosayak, the cherries and a Jimson song, which is the Dan Tansan Tariga, the Jimjik Batsuina, the German does they own it. The Yenayan, the Chuluk, Surgin, the Matsu, Samaga, that Tela Tariga, that Sukushir go. So these days, uh, some of the graduate students. In Tibet, they're writing about uh, uh, Islamic traditions, the um, Indian or Hindu traditions. And they say, oh, among the Islamic traditions, one do not consume pork. Some people say, oh, you can consume pork in certain regions. And then other Tibetans who read about the uh, Hindu religion, they only mention about the Indian, the Hindu followers, not consuming uh, buffalo meat. And uh, that's pretty much what they discuss. Tangatu m Huena Noa Sanji be Chulik de Laya, Kuranga Tari Shurgen Dan, Kuranga Yan, Stava Mojgo Kondre. That Tava Mojuna, that Telaya, uh Tene Chimaoana, uh Tene Shoksoso Lopra Chimodana, Girgen in Nanda, Loma in Nanda, that Jimji Shivanir Kabna, the Churung Chu Kuranga, Tene Yavjundana, Chu Kuranga, Lorjitana, Chu Kuranga, uh Tene Tati um, so for the uh, Buddhist uh, scholars, um, 
I just wanted to emphasize again, it's very important to truly try to understand the tradition well, and including you know, the uh, view of that teaching, and uh, um, both the scholars and students really paying attention to the background, the both the you know, religious and cultural background of the subject, the historical background and so on, and paying more attention in this area would really help to improve the research. And then I go back to one sentence uh, um, when Kemper talked about the uh, people writing on Hindu uh, teachings. I mean, more and more people are showing respect to other religion. Like uh, we understand the Hindus do not uh, consume buffalo meat, the Muslims do not consume pork, and so people respect to these teachings, right? Likewise, we also need to show respect to the unique traditions of the Buddhism too. Uh, 